Anyway, hello YouTube! This is Chelsea the Destroyer. We're gonna watch some Jane animations today. Um, specifically about her trip to Japan. Because I might be able to relate some of it. To some of it. Yeah. <laughs> Please do algorithmic, algorithmic interactions with me. Grab your snackies, grab your bevies. Let me know what you're eating and or drinking down below. And let's get to watching. Remember when Pokemon sent me every single one of their Gen 5 sitting cuties for me to rank? Turns out they really liked that video. So much, in hey. fact, that they said, hey. <laughs> A ranked video that went well. I <laughs> can't relate. Jaden, awesome video. Why don't you come to Japan to watch the Pokemon 2023 World Championships? Our treat. You won't have to pay for your flights or hotel or nothing. I've been to Japan once before in my entire life. I mean, that would be pretty hype. And it was back in 2018 with my family. We did a bunch <laughs> of fun little Japanese tourist things. It was a phenomenal trip. But ever since then, I've always wanted to go back and do all the- Look at that, look at the Zoro poster on the wall. Awesome nerdy stuff Japan has to offer that I didn't want to bother my family with. At the time, they didn't even know who Luffy was. They would have been so lost. So when Pokemon extended their hand and offered to fly not only me, but Jacob out to attend the biggest Pokemon <laughs> tournament in the world, I jumped for joy. Free trip to Japan! The tournament was only going on for a single weekend, but Jacob and I planned to stay there for three whole weeks to do a three bunch weeks. of said extra nerdy stuff. I go for two. I don't think I could go for three. I don't know. I don't feel like I could go for three. We were pumped. Eventually the time came, Jacob and I were packing up all our stuff and decided we both would bring an extra suitcase so we could treat ourselves a bit and buy a bunch of cool stuff while we're there. Don't judge us, we're a So when I go, first of all, I got a Delta card. So I got, I got Delta stuff, okay? So I take two suitcases, a, a, a purse or like a, backpack and another bag so like two suitcases a backpack and like a little roller carry-on thing that you can carry on the plane with you but not a suitcase sized one it's like half the size of a suitcase technically it's like both the backpack and the roller bag that i can take on could fit under the seat back in front of me just not together you know um so I have not gone, I've only gone to Tokyo. I've not gone to Osaka, Kyoto, or Nara. That's where I want to go next time I go. I want to go to Kyoto, Nara, and Osaka, and then like swing by Tokyo. <laughs> Delta is the official airline of the Atlanta Braves because it is, um, its hub is Atlanta. So, oh, hi, Zerifat, how's it going? Um, so like, I, I get this. I do carry an extra bag for goodies. And then also I have space in like my other bags that I carry on the plane with me in case like, oh, I need to, you know, take something breakable on the plane with me or like shove clothes in these, right? I also use my clothes as packaging. I also, I'm crazy. I buy a lot of figures. I don't give a shit about figures staying in their box. So I will take them out of their box and like cut around the plastic. <laughs> I take, I could take scissors specifically for this purpose. I will cut around the plastic and then I will like package them. And like, when I say package, I will surround them in my clothes to cushion them in my suitcase. This is also why I get latching suitcases, latching hard case suitcases. If there's a zipper, I don't want it. Fuck that. I want a latching one so that it does not flex or bend as much because I'm crazy. And this is how I buy all the shit in Japan because I know when I get home, those figure boxes are gonna get thrown away. I don't keep figure boxes. Feel however you want about that. I don't have the space to keep all the figure boxes. I throw the figure boxes away. I put them in cases, like glass cases in my house. Like I put the figures in clay, in displays, like glass displays anyway. So like I don't feel the need to keep the fucking boxes. I That's just going to take up space that I don't care about. So, you know, like... I So I just get... I just don't take the boxes home with me. Because I know I'm going to throw them away at home. Anime and Nintendo loving impulse buyers going to Japan. A game plan was needed. We were being responsible. <laughs> Two extra suitcases was definitely gonna be enough. Mm. Yep. Equipped with our. But you also went for luggage, three we weeks. Off to the airport. Pokemon straight up gave us business class seats. We didn't oh. ask for them or anything. So when we boarded, we realized we had. I've never flown business class. 
out of the country. I, I've flown like short flights when I got upgraded randomly, like once. Um, I get like Comfort Plus, which is just like a little bit more space, but not like I want business class. The goal that I will never achieve, Delta One to Japan, like the the amazing one. I will never choose that. That's like at least six thousand dollars a ticket, money wise. And then it's so many point airline points if I wanted to use points. But they give they're like beds, and like that would be my dream. Oh, but I feel like I I'm like I can't waste my money or my airline points on that. It's not worth it. One day, maybe. Had the seats where you could lay down. There even was some sort of seat divider that acted like a car <laughs> window, so I could roll it down and bother <laughs> Jacob whenever I wanted. Quick little 11 hour flight later, and we were in Japan. It was time to have the best trip of our lives. I'm, I'm not joking. I had the most incredible trip and got to do things I won't ever forget. And I, I won't because I've now plastered it onto the internet forever. We landed midday Japan time, so we decided to go to the first thing we wanted to see while abroad. Japanese McDonald's. I couldn't order anything except fries. <coughs> no, this is valid. I love going to, to like... It's me. I love going to McDonald's in other countries. It doesn't even have to be McDonald's. I will also go to KFC or a Wendy's. I don't care. If it is like a if it is a fast food chain in another country, like if I'm in another country and I see an American fast food chain that I go to in the States, I want to go to that fast food chain. I want to see how it tastes different. I want to see what they have on the menu that's different. I probably won't order the different things because I'm super picky, but I want to look at it. Like, I just, I want to experience it. So this is, this is just me. But Jacob and I both dropped our jaws when we saw something called the double Big Mac on the menu. Hungry I checks thought represent. Americans already went big with the Big Mac, but Japan did the impossible just to send a message. Just to send what a, a message. Magical place. <laughs> Let's begin with the next morning. Pokemon planned a bunch of cool stuff for the creators and partners they flew out, beginning with a group field trip to the Mega Tokyo Pokemon Center. Jacob and I woke up early for it and miss the bus they had for us. <laughs> and it totally wasn't completely my fault entirely because I hypothetically didn't read the schedule correctly and was taking my sweet time getting ready. Why would you think that? So we had- Jaden, do you not have the same level of just absolute paranoia and anxiety that I have or like... What's up, girlfriend? to take the trains on our own to get there. Anyone that remembers my first Japan trip knows the trains were me and my family's mortal <laughs> enemy number one. We kept getting it wrong and it was failure after failure the entire trip. You'd think that with all that pride- I don't find that the trains in Japan are confusing. And maybe that's just because I've been a few times. The, the trains in Paris were confusing as hell for me. Like I didn't understand that shit at all. Like I was confused the whole time. I got on the train multiple times in Paris. I still don't fully understand the train system in Paris like at all um Japan's is pretty straightforward especially if you go and be like hey could I get like a uh, English map like if you go ask them sometimes they're just out and you can grab an English map sometimes you just have to ask the train attendant and they will give you an English map it is so much easier to figure out like it's super great and then like Google Maps of course will also help you Trains in Romania are late, really late. The trains in Japan are not. <laughs> like, they... I don't think I ever used Rome's trains. Paris's was confusing, though, when I was there. Also, hi, Abby. Um, it was confusing as hell to me. I don't know. I had a hard time figuring out which trains were what and, and, and like, how do I get to where I'm... It was a whole thing. Um, trains in Japan, streamlined, clean... They looked at everyone else's problems and was like, mm, we're not going to do that. We're going to have a better train system. And I really appreciate it. And I would love a, like, American version of that. Please. Your experience and struggle, I would have grown as a Japanese train understander, right? Mm -hmm. Nope, we got on the wrong train. But at least <laughs> we were having a, a good time. <laughs>
After a lot of freaking out and mental strain and regrets, we finally arrived at our destination and although by the time we got there they had already finished looking at the Pokemon Center, we were able to grab a quick snack with the group at the Pokemon Sweets Cafe. I meant to take a picture of the Pikachu waffle before I ate half its cranium, but I forgot, so this is what you get. Now that we were with the group, we were able to travel with them for the rest of the day, so we packed into the bus and headed off to a traditional tea ceremony where we were taught all about how the tea masters would make tea and tea etiquette and all these things about the significance of tea in Japanese culture all while getting to taste the tea the tea master made. Again I meant to take this picture before I took a chunk out of the little sweet they gave us but <laughs> here we are yet again. No I um I feel this. I forget to take pictures of shit all the time too. I feel this. I'm just not that great at this. They also served us a really <laughs> special lunch of super fancy bento boxes. Like, so fancy that the host was like, dude, I've never even had these bento boxes before. I was super excited, but I don't mean to be ungrateful or wasteful, but the box was full of super fancy, complicated fish and seafood. I knew going to Japan, I'd have to be flexible with food because it's really hard to be vegan or even vegetarian there. So I really tried to eat as much as possible and look thankful. But yeah, I, I struggled a lot, but I- Same. I am so picky that, that that's a thing. Like, so I've looked at real cons and stuff like that. And like, there's a lot of them that are like, oh, they come and they they make your food and they bring it to you and all this other stuff. And I'm like, I couldn't do that. Like, I could eat the rice that they give me. That's probably the only thing I would be able to eat. I don't eat fish, really. Like, I eat a little bit of fish, but for the most part, I don't really eat fish and I don't eat things that have a lot of sauce on them. And like, I'm very, very horribly picky. It's a whole thing. Um, so I feel this. This is just about me. I eat tuna. I eat canned tuna. I don't eat real tuna. <laughs> you know, like a cat. I eat canned tuna. The blue one. Still had a great time and it was an honor. We were dropped off at the Yokohama Chinatown and left to explore a bit until dinner I have a few hours. I have never Everyone been there. Everyone separated into groups and Jacob, Stefan, the guy that sent me all the sitting cuties, you guys remember him. The guy named Steve and I went and pursued the street food a bit before stumbling into a little arcade with a bunch of crane machines. I got this silly little bear minifigure. His name... I do not like cheese on my burgers. I like plain burgers with ketchup. So it's just um, bun, meat, and ketchup. It's the only thing I eat on my burgers. It's Chico off. So I decided Chico to innocently off. carry him around in my pocket for the entirety of the trip. You know, because he was silly. This single action severely changed the course <laughs> of my mental stability going forward. You'll see soon enough. But look at these cute photos I got with him. We had a great uh -huh. dinner, headed back to the hotel, got to hang out with our good old Pokemon rival Jit. Or yawn a bit and called it a night. <laughs> the next day we all got to do some private shopping at the Pokemon World's pop-up shop. I'll just say we bought way too much stuff that we also don't regret in the slightest. I even got this video of Jacob grabbing more and more sitting cuties as the workers kept reorganizing them to keep the display looking perfect. We walked out of there with three giant bags of stuff. But it's okay because remember we anticipated this with our extra suitcases which I am starting to wonder if they are going to be mm. enough, but surely we will come down. We were then all taken to the creature's offices. You know, just the place where they make Pokemon cards. It was gorgeous in there. They had these awesome sculptures of giant Pokemon That's pretty cards cool. with crystals, and all the walls were lined with 3D card art. It felt like I was in a building with a lot of significance. Be because I was. We got a tour around the <laughs> building, met the TCG card testers, and were able to ask them questions about their process. Even got to have a little Q&A session with Atsushi Nagashima, the game director of the Pokemon TCG. It was funny, one of the people in our group asked how they chose which Pokemon to make cards for. A good question. And then followed it up with, I really like Mantike, but there's only two Mantike cards that exist. And the assistant pulled up a list of all the Pokemon Mantike cards that have ever been created. And sure enough, there were only two. The director chuckled and was essentially like, yeah, sometimes Pokemon get lost in the cracks. We kind of just make... There's so many Pokemon, like it makes sense that some of them get lost in the cracks though. Cards of Pokemon I like. For example, I like. my favorite Pokemon is Gengar. And you know what? 
that actually makes a lot of sense. Also, we were able to have a Q&A session so funny. with the Pokemon card art director and three artists who actually draw art for the cards. That was super interesting. That's cool. And I was so incredibly inspired by that discussion. But you know those Pokemon cards with the super cute clay art? That artist's name is Yuka Mori, and she was in that panel. I was so starstruck. Oh. Those are some of my favorite Pokemon cards. And not only that, but she hosted a little workshop for us where she gave us clay and taught us how to make little clay magnemites like in this card here. Speaking That's of cute. this card, she brought the actual original magnemite for us to see. That was by far the coolest thing that I've ever gotten to be a part of. We got to meet a piece of genuine history. I felt like I was meeting the president. Also, here's <laughs> me and Jacob's magnemites that we made. Day three of our little Pokemon cute. field trip and we were taken to another Pokemon center. This time in Shibuya, which was also right across from a Nintendo store. It was like a bull. I've been there. I think there's a Capcom store really close by too. But yeah, I've been there. I don't know if that's the one that was also near the Final Fantasy pop-up. But there was another one that I think was near a Final Fantasy pop-up. I could be wrong. It was shot through our credit cards. In the shopping <laughs> center, I saw a little gotcha machine with little miniature chicken. I bought... A Splatoon 3 shirt there. <laughs> like, so, like, they were selling this shirt, like, your starting shirt in Splatoon 3. Um, like, the, the shirt that you start out with that's in all of the trailers and stuff. They were selling that shirt. And I bought it for myself. <laughs> plushes. I was only interested in... Yeah, it's got holes in it and rips. I love that shirt. It's good. Getting Chikawa, but I decided to test my luck anyway. And I got him first try! Now I had two of them. Yes, the original was still in my pocket. You can safely assume he is in my pocket for the entirety of this video. I've got pictures to prove it. Jacob snapped <laughs> this awesome picture of the Chikawa brain rot taking over. When we were looking around in the Shonen Jump Shop, a little Japanese boy <coughs> pointed at Jacob and went, Sanji-san, before his mother quickly <laughs> yanked him away, and I still to this day laugh at that interaction. Poor <laughs> kid so saw funny. his first blonde guy in real life and immediately thought it was Sanji. Later that- To be fair, he does look kind of like he will be Sanji. Cause he's got like a little goatee and stuff too. Day we also got to attend the Pokemon Symphony where a live orchestra played Pokemon songs and it was absolutely incredible. Video game orchestras are so cool. It My only issue, that's really cool. I'm not saying it's not. I'm not into any video game enough to recognize um, most of the songs from it. And I have a hard time getting into Pokemon. If you guys have uh, been around for a few years with me, you guys know that because I will try to play um, Pokemon games and I have a hard time getting into them and I tend to drop them before I finish them because um, I just, I don't know. I didn't get into it until college. I get into it. I didn't play my first one until college. So I would recognize a bunch of Kingdom Hearts songs just because they haunt me and will forever haunt me. For various reasons. Anyway. It always tugs on my heartstrings to see video game music transformed into such a beautiful new art form. Highly recommend attending one if you have any favorite games or franchises. On to the first day of Worlds. It was exciting. People flooded into the venue. We watched the opening ceremony in the crowd. Just wow. This is the whole reason why we're here. We went back to shopping. Look at this cute little chico <laughs> book I found in a nearby bookstore. At this point, we were absolutely pushing it in terms of luggage space, and we were That's day so four into a two and a half week trip. Our sh so, you can send stuff to yourself in Japan. You, there, there's, I don't remember what it's called, but there's a way to sign up online to be able to send stuff to yourself, like packages to yourself, that you sign up and you do all this information, you go get a cardboard box, you tape it, you blah, 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 you pack it up, you you then go to a, like, local post office to post it, you use your hotel address as the address you're sending it from, quote, unquote. It is a thing. And they tell you on the website, like, use your hotel's address. Your hotel will often help you with it. It is a thing. Like, you you can mail stuff to yourself. Granted, I have mailed stuff to myself and had it been destroyed upon delivery, which was a whole thing. Thank you. I'm pretty sure USPS fucked it up. And then they were like, 
oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, yeah, okay, there's a boot print on this. I don't, what, what do you mean you don't know what you're talking about? Anyway, um, you can send shit to yourself. You can EMS stuff, which is a little bit more expensive, but gets tracking and protection on it. You can mail stuff to yourself. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> Shopping sprees until this cowboy bebop concert. That's kind of neat. Point we're very not frugal, so we cut our losses and bought two extra giant suitcases. Okay, that's expensive. Like having another. So my two bags that I take are free for me. I don't have to pay luggage fees because they're because I have the Delta card, right? So buying a whole extra suitcase though is, ex you have to buy the suitcase and then you have to buy, pay to put the suitcase on the plane, right? That gives me a little anxiety. I mean, I guess it's a thing. I just never considered that a thing because it's like you can just mail shit to yourself and it's probably cheaper. Um, one thing that I regret though, the first time, first, second time maybe, I think it was the first time. I went to Japan, all right? It was, was that the second time? Actually, it, it might have been the third time. It might have been when we went with Tim. Um, no, that wasn't the third time. Anyway, one of the early times I went to Don Quixote. Okay, this is important. Don Quixote is like a discount store kind of thing that a lot of people go to in Japan. Um, it's got great stuff. I go to it every time. It's got anime stuff. It's got, you know, makeup. It's got home goods. It's got suitcases. It's got a whole bunch of shit in there. It's kind of like Japanese Walmart, yeah. One of the times I went, they had the largest motherfucking suitcase I have ever seen in my entire life. And when I say this, I could have crawled into this suitcase and had it zipped up around me. And it was a spinner bag. And I regret every day not buying that. Did I need that suitcase? Absolutely fucking not. I didn't. But I regret every day that I didn't buy that. And the reason why I didn't buy it is because it would be so expensive to get it back because it would be way too big for any airline. Like no airline... In Mel Charles are back home. No airline would have been like, yeah, okay, because it was so large. Okay. It was the biggest suitcase I have ever seen in my entire life. And I wish I owned it. And every other time I have gone to Don Quixote, they have not had that suitcase. That suitcase is gone. At the time I took a picture of it, but that was like three or four phones ago. I don't have that picture anymore, I don't think. But I love that suitcase. And I really wish. I really wish I had bought that suitcase. <laughs> uh, would I have slept in this? Would I sleep in a suitcase? Not if I can help it. Yeah, no, it was giant. And it was like, oh my God. I mean, it was like one of those cloth suitcases with like the zipper, which is not generally my jam, but oh my God. It, it would have been like, it would have been so great for me to take Two cons as my cosplay bag because I put I sometimes I need multiple suitcases for cosplays I'm not gonna lie to you and I'm only gonna wear maximum probably two cosplays but sometimes I need multiple bags okay I'm sorry I like to take a lot of stuff with me just in case um sometimes I like multiple options how am I feeling you know what's the weather like I'm just saying like I overpack okay I would have loved this giant ass fucking suitcase for my so cosplay suitcase and I regret every day that I did not buy it to fit everything better. Okay, we knew we were gonna need extra suitcases. Getting a few extra couldn't hurt. Look, the flights were paid for. We were still saving money at this point, I think. That's think? my rationalization. Right. I'm going with that. To be fair, flights are like over $1,000. So technically, yeah, you're probably saving money. Also in the mall were tons of Pokemon monitors straight up playing the world championships. TCG, Pokemon Go, VGC. Japan treated worlds like it was the Super Bowl. And it was just I mean, so that's pretty cool neat. to see one of my main interests so culturally celebrated. People of all ages would stop by to watch for a bit before going back to their shopping. I can't explain it, but it just made me very happy. We even got to see Wolfie live on the monitors. How'd he do? Uh, he did great. Don't worry about it. Nothing <laughs> happened. Look, we were just happy to see our friend on the Pokeball screen. Proud of you, Wolfie. You're so cool. The second day of Worlds was I mean, that's pretty... Getting there is pretty cool. 
Like, getting to that point, like, getting to Worlds, that's awesome. Even if you don't win, like, that's pretty cool. Oh, Bash, I'm sorry. So hyped that we left Yokohama and flew to Osaka. I haven't mentioned it yet, but we actually got tickets to see the one and only Hatsune Miku. Live that would be hype the as hell. I know how huge that is for me. I want to talk about how life changing that was, but I'm going to make a whole separate video about that experience I'll be posting next. All I'm going to say is it was the best day of my entire life by a lot. Subscribe now before you miss it, just saying. I will mention mm -hmm. we did have to take the train to get back later that night and got super lost again. And we never get better at it. Don't expect anything to change in that regard. We did finally get back to Yokohama, crashed for the night, and had a nice slow morning as we got ready for finals later that day. To any One Piece fans who are caught up, we were in Japan for the One Piece anime episode. You know what I'm talking about, 1072. We were able mm -hmm. to turn on our hotel TV and watch it live and that was that's pretty so neat cool i don't talk about how much i love one piece much mainly because it doesn't really come up but one piece is peak and it was an honor to be in japan at such an night i'm on episode 47 i think yeah iconic part of the manga and anime's history Anyway, back to Pokemon. Sorry about that. We were able mm. to watch the final VGC match live, got to chat and eat dinner with Wolfie and some other friends, had a late night hangout with Yawn again, and that was about it. Day seven meant it was time to pack up all our stuff from the hotel, say goodbye to Pokemon and Yokohama, and head on over to the apartment we rented for the rest of our stay just so outside of Tokyo. At this point, heck? we had filled up all six suitcases and multiple backpacks. I didn't mention it, but Pokemon gave us a truckload of gifts that we genuinely had no idea what to do with. We're grateful nonetheless. Thank you, Pokemon. But yeah, the, the taxi ride was a bit awkward. So are you meeting up with some friends? No. After we got <laughs> situated in the new place. <laughs> Another thing you can do. You can have your suitcases um, mailed. So specifically, it's usually overnight. Um, you can have your suitcases mailed or something from one hotel to another. The caveat is it kind of has to be between hotels. Um, I think you can maybe do it at Combinis. I don't know, but I know you can do it at hotels, which is really convenient. So if you're staying specifically in hotels, which of course is not like Airbnb, is like branded hotels, your hotel can ship your suitcases from the hotel you're leaving to the hotel that you're going to. That is a thing. Just saying. This is hotel to Airbnb. They might. So there are some other places that can do it. It doesn't necessarily have to be hotels. I just don't know the information about it. Like there are some places that. Um, the only thing they do is they hold bags and or ship bags for you. So like um, if you're walking around, you can be like, hey, I would like you to hold my suitcases um, because I'm transitioning right now and they will hold your suitcases. You just have to go back before they close to get them. They can also ship your suitcases and I think they will also receive your suitcases, maybe. Um, so if there's like a location like that and also maybe Combinis, maybe Combinis. I don't promise that though. And also that's kind of like, uh, I would feel kind of iffy about it, but... So we decided to look around the area and grab some lunch. And I gotta say, the little hole-in-the-wall restaurant... But also, they took a cab, so, like, I guess you just, you know, get a bigger cab. Jacob found was some of the best ramen I've ever had, ever. They even made it vegetarian for me, which was extremely kind of them. Food modifying is a bit tricky in Japan compared to the States, so I would... Food modifying is so tricky in Japan. They don't have that... I, societal thing they don't modified food usually um it's really hard i went to i remember going to tokyo disney sea and they had it was like shrimp but there was like a sauce on the shrimp or maybe i was getting a burger or something and i asked them like just don't put any sauce in it could you make it, like can you make it plain can you make it without any sauce confused Everybody, like everyone involved was like, what do you mean? And it was a whole fucking thing. And like they did eventually do it, but I caused an incident and I felt so bad. And I was like, oh my God. Like they had to call multiple people and I was like, oh my God, I just have to find things that I don't need 
altered in any way. <laughs> like, I feel so bad for everybody involved. I'm so sorry. Thank you so much for working with me. I won't do this again. <laughs> like, I will just get french fries next time. I'm so sorry. Like, <laughs> I feel so bad about that. But Hole in the Wall restaurants in Japan, amazing. Some of my favorite restaurants. I was very, very thankful, and it was delicious. We then proceeded to do absolutely nothing for the rest of the day because we were exhausted from yeah, the mood. trip so far. I haven't mentioned absolutely everything we'd been doing on the trip because it would be a lot of, first we did this and it was cool, then we did this and it was cool. Even though it was such a pleasure to be invited, I was so dead and mm -hmm. definitely looked super not approachable or friendly to the rest of the group by the end of it. Sorry, guys. But <laughs> neither time nor Japan stops for anyone, so we had to keep on chugging along. There were a bunch of friends we wanted to see while in Japan, and one of them was Connor. He wanted to take us to what he deemed his favorite Italian place ever. I asked if it was, like, fancy Italian, to which I was given the answer of no. So we got there <laughs> having a great time, and suddenly we realized Junichi Masuda, the director of Game Freak, is there having dinner. Not a fancy dinner, my ass. I then looked <laughs> down to see the Freddy Fazbear FNAF t-shirt that I am wearing. Not the best Jaden moment to exist, but hey, that's what can pretty you funny. Do? The food was phenomenal, though. I already mentioned the best ramen I've ever had while on the trip, but this was genuinely the best pasta I've ever had in my entire life. Maybe even a top three meals ever for me. I don't know what the other two would mm. be, but that Connor place is definitely up there. The next day, we went to the One Piece store in Shibuya and bought a lot of stuff because there was a lot of of topical and hype things in there as you could imagine if you don't get it go catch up and come back don't worry it won't take too long my favorite character it won't take is too Seahawk, long but out of all the stuff the store had to offer there were only a few stickers and a single keychain from me yeah i'm still mauling about that one i just want more mihawk is that too much to ask for even this guy got better merch the world's greatest swordsman deserves better I guess I'll just take my Zoro and Law stuff. That's cool too, I suppose. <laughs> I also found a bunch of Chikawa stuff in a Kitty Land store. And this is truly when you get to see where things start going downhill for me. I just like the funny little cartoon bear thing. What? Is that such a crime? I don't remember what we did the rest of I feel like I have a hard time uh, getting into things that are just kind of standalone things, you know, like branded sin. Like, I mean, I guess there's like Hello Kitty and I do have like slight things specifically for Batsumaru, um, Hello Kitty stuff, just because like as a kid, my parents would buy me Hello Kitty stuff. But like, um, but Hamtaro has an anime. So like if you, if you want, like, so these things don't have, I mean, Hello Kitty does now, but like, these things are are just like this is just this branded item this this thing you know it's not based on any media it's just it's this thing does that make sense like this Chikawa thing I don't know where Chico was from it might just be like this little bear and they're like Chico and friends look at all these bears and stuff I don't know I can't get into stuff like that I'm just kind of like even if it's cute like I might buy it and I'm like oh that's cute but like I don't get into like she's getting into it. Like I can't get into that kind of stuff. I don't think. The day it's a manga. Okay, we well, just crashed and passed out. This trip, as surreal as it's been so far, has been absolutely taking a toll on me, and I def. Yeah, sometimes like Japan can definitely be a lot, especially if you're trying to jam as much as you can in every day. You need to take a few times when you're not cramming as much stuff and i'm bad about this because i absolutely if i'm going to another country or if i'm going on vacation i try to cram as much stuff and experiences and and whatever into every single day i can and i exhaust myself so i'm just as bad at this but you do kind of need to be like this is the day where we're just gonna walk around and chill like we're gonna sleep in and then we're just gonna walk around and chill or here's a place we can go to that is nearby to where we are so if we wake up really late we can just walk there or take the train there or whatever and it's super chill and it's not a big deal if we don't make it like you need to have some of those days especially if you're going for three fucking weeks babes you need to plan some chill times. You need to plan some days where you sleep in.
or where you don't go very far or whatever. Desperately needed to just not move or talk yeah. or exist for a bit. We were doing so many different things that were yeah. all awesome and hanging out with so many different people that were all awesome. But man, <laughs> I am not built for extended periods of that much excitement and socializing. As much as I would like Dude. to change this fact, I'm also not a very active person. I Same. know, I know. Up until this trip, I was practically sitting down 24 seven, working all the time to prep as much work as possible so I could have a guilt-free three weeks off. And my muscles were definitely starting to decay at that point. I mm. looked at my phone's step meter thing and there was one day where I literally got 300 steps. That's pathetic. And suddenly I'm <laughs> logging over 20,000 daily. My body was screaming. What the hell are you doing out there? Please <laughs> stop. Plus, me at every Japan anime convention. The hottest, most humid time of the year. Oh every my God. Like Absolutely fucking not. So they went during the summer. I don't fucking think so. I refuse to go during the summer. There's been multiple people that want to go to Japan with me. Like, let's do a friend's trip or let's, you know, when next time you want to go, I want to go with you, like whatever. Which is not abnormal. I've gone with multiple friends. Straight up, I'm like, I refuse. 100% will not go in the summer. Like, uh, that is a hard no for me. I don't give a shit. I don't care if you were in school and you're like, oh, but I really want to go with you. I'm not going the fucking summer. At all. I am not doing it. Winter's iffy. 100% not going in the fucking summer. Like, no. And like... Um, two of my friends have gone, actually, a few of my friends have either lived there during the summer or gone to visit there during the summer, and they're like, no, no, you are so valid. And I'm like, thank you, because I live in the south of the United States, and it's a fucking hot and humid where I live. It's worse in Japan, right? Because Japan is like a walking society. You walk places, Okay, you don't just get in your car and drive. You walk there or you take a train and that means you have to walk to the train station. I am not going in the fucking summer. Absolutely not. And no. No. I'll be an old man before you ask to go overseas. Um, it is like, there's specific people that want to go with, which is fine. Um... It's just, I just, no, my God, absolutely not. The air-conditioned luxury of a building, we would immediately be drenched mm -hmm. in sweat. Look, I'm used to the heat. I grew up in Arizona, but even this was too much. So you grew up in Arizona where it's dry, baby doll. You, it's, it's humid as hell over there. It's humid. It's different. It's different. Oh, my God. It's worse. I, mm, nope. Not doing it at all. And yeah, I also don't... Cheer one global warming hit hard. It's not even necessarily a global warming thing. It's just like... it. it it's just historically... Humid heat. Like, it's bad. Um, but... I, I don't... <laughs> I don't know. I just couldn't... I don't... I like being comfortable. <laughs> when are we all going to Japan together? Uh, not anytime soon. Um... I very much need to be comfortable. I don't want to be sweating. Like going to Disney in like December and May, specifically May, was pretty rough. And that was in May, like early May when I went like to Disneyland, right? Not Disneyland. I'm sorry, Disney World. And I'm just like, it, it was pretty rough. And there was time when I would get, would start to feel sick. So I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'm overheated. Like I have to go inside now. Like, I have to find a place with air conditioning. I have to go inside now. Um, and I had uh, electric fans, like, personal, like, hand fans. I had, like, cooling towels. I was dressed correctly for the weather. It was rough. Oh, I mean, not with that attitude. So, yeah. Gotta take a boat. Crash and burn it was. Tokyo Disneyland was a bit underwhelming. It felt like a slightly worse version of the one in California. So I like Tokyo Disneyland because if the weather is right, their parades are amazing. Like their parades out of this world, but they get canceled a lot because of weather. So if it's raining, they don't do the parade, which is sad. Um, they also have um, some rides that I like, but 
Yeah, their parades are amazing. Because of the oddly spaced layout and surprisingly empty vibe, we did go to a Stitch themed show thing. And as we were walking in, a worker stopped us and said, oh, excuse me, Stitch only speaks Japanese. Like warning us it's not super tourist friendly. But I just think the statement of Stitch only speaks Japanese is hilarious. We went in anyway and yep, Stitch only spoke Japanese. Yeah, overall, it was not the best thing we did, but apparently, I didn't know this, Japan has two Disneys, Disneyland and Disney Sea, and we went yeah. to land, which is unanimously deemed the worst of the two. So, oops, better luck next time. J the issue with Disney Sea, though, is that they don't have like parades and shit. They have unique rides. So if you're there for like showmanship, I think Disneyland is better. If you were there for specifically rides, Disney Sea is better. So I feel like you just have to pick and choose what you're wanting to experience. I wanted to experience like entertainment, which is why the last time we went, I went to Disneyland and then it was sad because it kept raining. So a lot, most of the parades got rained out and I was like super sad about it. Um, but I still got to do stuff that I like and enjoy. So like it wasn't that bad. But if I knew, I probably would have gone to Disney Sea. Jacob and I took two more rest days where we just turned to Ash. Then up and out, yeah. back to Osaka we go. This time we went to an Eve concert. Besides Hatsune Miku, the Japanese band Eve is the only other concert I've said I wanted to go see. I love their music videos they have for all their songs. It's always such beautiful animation. And by the way, they're the ones who sang the season one Jujutsu Kaisen anime opening theme, if you're lost. Earlier in the trip, Jacob just so happened to look up if they were doing a concert while we were there. And lo and behold, they were. He got some totally not scalped tickets, which turned out to be a super complicated process. So thank you, Jacob. You're the best <laughs> friend I've ever had. Thank you. Buying tickets to stuff in Japan can be very difficult. Like, I, I will say, like, even trying to buy stuff, like, tickets for uh, Disneyland was weirdly very difficult difficult and like it will like my so i use my amex to do it right and they were like okay cool and then i was like cool i would also like disney sea tickets please and like i got rejected they were like your card won't do it and i didn't get any like issues with from my credit card company it was just like no and i don't understand why and i was like i could have probably just walked up to the ticket counter and bought the tickets like it other people had been doing that and I was like I you know but you want to make sure you're able to go in because it takes you so long to get there that you and it's kind of expensive to get there because you have to take multiple trains and shit that you don't want to walk up and be like hi I'd like a ticket and for them to be like oh we're sold out of tickets you can't come in today right that would fucking suck especially after you go through the hullabaloo of getting like your bags and shit checked that would suck um but I don't know. Maybe I'll just do that next time. We're going through the trenches for a silly old me. Anyway, the <laughs> concert was so incredible. The atmosphere was fantastic. They had awesome visual effects going on. The glow bands a lot of people bought were perfectly synced to the music and colors on the stage, which really That's enhanced neat. the experience. The music was great, which, I mean, of course it was. That was the whole reason we went in the first place. I talk about it more in the upcoming Miku video, but Japanese encores are so much different from the American ones. They're so <laughs> quiet and polite. There is pretty much much no screaming and cheering it was just a long applause with a semi whisper chant of encore encore and they also made us wait like five minutes for them to come back out. My hands were getting itchy just from clapping so much. That's how long it took. And then yeah. when they finally came out, they ended up doing like five extra songs. Yeah. I mean, I'm not complaining, but after the fourth time thinking, man, that was a great last extra song. Well, time to head home. Wait another it starts getting a bit comedic this is just a side tangent but jacob went off to use the bathroom before the show started and came back 10 minutes later like dude this is crazy but it took me a bit longer to find a bathroom because there were so many extra women's bathrooms which is like whoa that's actually so smart there's always such a huge yeah. line for the women's bathroom compared to the men's in any scenario i was just yep. shocked japan was like okay then we'll make more women's bathrooms to fix that problem like it was so simple i know in america it would probably turn into a stupid political thing but it made me so happy japan just implemented such an obvious and straightforward solution so easily for the gals the next day we headed over to universal which was hands down the best amusement park i've ever been to 
so they can do amusement parks well. First of all, <laughs> Universal Japan is way more anime and manga focused than the ones in the States, yeah. which made it instantly more engaging for I me. I haven't gone Jacob there, and though. I both agreed we would window shop for the first part of the day and then buy all the things we wanted as we were leaving so we wouldn't have to lug around a bunch of bags all day. But we immediately that saw did? a little one piece shop and cracked. We just yep, wanted no. to wear all those right. one piece headbands. That's rule breaking worthy. We also got some towels because surprise, surprise surprise it was freaking hot i know i've mm -hmm. been complaining about the weather here and there but my lord it was miserably scorching japan has such a big culture around staying cool while outside and i totally get it now people would be walking around with little fans ice yep. packs towels a lot of women had parasols i'll say if we didn't get those towels we probably could have passed out from heat stroke that day later on i even ended up getting another towel it was a cute pikachu one but i got it mainly because it was a cloak design after soaking that thing in cold water and putting it on my body temperature instantly lowered like five degrees however oh, nice. that meant i was walking around the park looking like this Back to the awesome <laughs> stuff. We did a bunch of attractions like watch a fun 4D Jujutsu Kaisen show where the seats move around, <laughs> went on a super cool 3D VR Spider-Man ride. We tried to cool down by going on a Minions thing called Freeze Ray Sliders that claimed to cool riders down with a blast of chilled mist from a giant freeze ray. But we got on and absolutely did not even touch a drop of the mist because it never ended up getting in range of our cart. That oh. felt like an actual tragedy at the time. <laughs> There were a few big roller coasters we wanted to go on, but I get super motion sick and forgot to bring nausea medicine, so no roller coasters for us, but I shall return one day. The park, of one course, day. had a bunch of cool themed restaurants, one of them being a super cool One Piece restaurant. Did I mention I like One Piece? There also was a special <laughs> Sanji one, but we didn't know you needed a reservation, so Aww. fooey. It was awesome, though. I love One Piece. After a few hours of rides and being broiled alive, we decided to mm -hmm. fully cool off by going on the Jurassic Park ride that's just giant splash mountain with dinosaurs. We cooked in line for probably a solid hour, and as soon as we were literally stepping foot inside the ride it started pouring rain <laughs> now that's just not fair i don't even that's, understand how that happened but that's funny whatever we started buying all the stuff we window shopped for as we waited for the one piece live show to begin again please refrain from judging i am being vulnerable and open here by the way as we were walking around we stumbled onto a little mario themed show just out in a courtyard area they played some fun little custom songs and had all these dancers alongside the mascots and then out of nowhere they started absolutely blasting the crowd with like gallons of water i didn't even see it coming it was like firefighters showed up to put out a giant fire except the fire was a bunch of Japanese people. The time came <laughs> and we got to file in for the special One Piece live show and even though Jacob and I didn't understand a single part of it because it was all in Japanese, it was awesome and the costume design was phenomenal. It was a bit unfortunate though because the seats were all in like a half circle formation around the stage. As much as they tried to make the show enjoyable from all angles, it was pretty hard to see the main things going on in the center. <laughs> My only true complaint though is that that Zoro didn't come to our side at all. All the other characters rotated around so we could see them, but Zoro only did it at the very end to take a bow. Also, Mihawk being included would have been nice, but it's okay. By the time we got to enter the land, it was like 9 p.m. We got up at 6 a.m. by the way, so we pretty much just rode the Yoshi's Island ride they don't have in the States and headed home because that's all the energy we had left. But even just seeing that, it was miles better than the one in the States. Also, we picked up a little dinner at the 7-Eleven near our hotel 7-eleven is actually awesome in japan by the way and they it had is. a few little chikoa plushy keychains and i bought them just being transparent here we woke just up early the next morning to catch our flight back to tokyo and hurried over my favorite is kombini is lawson's i like their chicken nuggies but 7-eleven's good too to the Kirby Cafe. Emily actually booked the reservation for us. She was meant to also be there, but she was only able to get two seats and gave them to us as a gift. Aww. Emily. I will always be indebted to you for your sacrifice. The cafe itself was so well decorated with all these little Kirby things and the menu was adorable. I got the star curry and a magical little fruity drink with a Kirby marshmallow that triggered my cute aggression. Jacob- We did! Emily is in Marichu. We had her at Comic Con one year. Got the pizza and a Kirby burger, but since he made modif- <gasps> I 
those french fries shaped like stars and moons? I love that. Vacations, the staff asked him to not post a picture of the burger to the public. Like, they oh. didn't know he was a content creator or anything. I guess they just didn't want the public to see a naked Kirby <laughs> burger. We also both got desserts. I already decided I was gonna consume the Kirby. The presentation was beautiful. It was literal art on a plate. Taste-wise, it was decent. The body was some sort of gelatin, which I wasn't too crazy about, but the rest was super tasty. I did my best, but he ended up looking like he was in a horrific accident accident when I threw in the towel. <laughs> the cafe also has a special little private store connected to it. <clears throat> and yeah, what you expect happened definitely happened. We left with <laughs> the money. Continued to look around the shopping center the cafe was connected to and ended up walking into a gotcha store. I am about to be very vulnerable with you here. <laughs> Every time she stops, I'm just like, listen. <laughs> I'm just like, this is so funny. This is one of the lowest points of my entire <laughs> life. Please what do they have? Don't what do they have? Too much less of me. What do they what have? Happened in that gotcha store. What happened? So I walk in, spot Chikawa, beeline it to the machine. Obviously, okay. like I mentioned before, I'm only interested in Chikawa, so I was only playing for him. But by the cursed luck of the gacha gods, mm -hmm. I just could not get him. I was going back and forth between the machine and the coin exchange, getting multiples of every other little guy, but no Chikawa. I could feel the workers' glances at me, probably because the desk they were standing behind was right next to the machine I was grinding. But after way too much money, mm. he dropped. I got my well-earned, Horribly priced at that point, Chikawa. I then started looking at all the other machines, putting some coins in a few. So me and these gacha machines, I am the pickiest person. I refuse to play a gacha machine like this unless I am okay with getting any individual thing within it because I will pull my least fucking favorite thing, okay? That is what I believe. I actually have pretty good luck with gacha machines. Um, usually, sometimes I don't like I, the last time I was in Japan, I would look at every gacha machine and be like, I don't care enough about most of the things that are in this. So I refuse to play this gacha machine. And then finally I was like, you know what? I want to play a gacha machine. There was one that had three reusable collapsible tote bags, like these small little tote bags, right? They had a, um, shit, what's her name? Marie from Aristocats, they had a, I want to I couldn't remember if it was Fox and the Hound or Lady and the Tramp. One of those two, I think, it, I think it was Lady and the Tramp, and they had a 101 Dalmatians one. I was like, I would not mind any of these, but I kind of don't want 101 Dalmatians. I want Marie from the Aristocats. I'm okay with a lady and the tramp, I kind of do not want 101 Dalmatians. There were only three options. I will play it once. I played it once. I got 101 Dalmatians. I was like, a fucking course he did. Walked off. Told Ray about it because Ray was also in there playing, playing stuff. Ray is like, well, go see if there's anything else you want. So I'm like, okay, because we were in like the biggest gotcha store. So I was like wondering around, like, I'm probably not going to find anything else. Like, it's, it's whatever. Ray comes up like, hey... And I was like, what's up? And he was like, so I played that gacha machine for you, hoping to get Marie. I got another 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> so what I did, because like I like, I do little crow gifts for my wives. Um, I had been getting like little trinkets for them. Cause like, I like giving trinkets, right? So I'd been like picking up little trinkets as I saw them in Japan, like things that aren't stupid expensive right like little chorographs little keychains stuff like that i was like okay i'll use these two bags because i don't care for them and i will just put their crow gifts their little trinkets that i bought them in these bags and hand them to them so that they don't go to waste <laughs> that's fine i didn't get what i wanted but it works i refuse to buy thing i refuse to do gacha if i'm not okay with getting every single one of them because I feel like I will sink too much fucking money in otherwise. Just trying to get the one thing that I want, you know? Have a good night, DB.
here and there, until I stopped at one that had a line of animals playing band instruments. They were very silly, but there was a little pigeon holding up symbols, and I really wanted to get him for Jordan and Kelsey. In went the coins. Tiger, elephant, fox. It was happening again. Everything <laughs> except the one I wanted. Which I know more or less that's the luck with gotchas. Yep. But it was getting to the point where I was getting surprised the pigeon was dodging me as much as it was. Probably <laughs> the next one. What? Eventually, I had to go back to the coin exchange. And as I was about to put in more money, I saw out of the corner of my eye one of the workers peek out and take a look in <laughs> horror at all the gotcha puns that were sitting at the top of my bag. They then raised up their hand and said something in Japanese while shaking their head. And I knew in my heart, I was being cut off. <laughs> Please, I, I can stop whenever, just a few more hits and I I'm done. The pigeon is next, I can, I can feel it. Why Why do you look afraid? It's under the desk. <laughs> I got kicked out of a gotcha store. I had hit an all-time low. I <laughs> the fuck? Shinji chair. <laughs> oh my god. I told my friends and they said they probably just thought I was gonna try and resell them. But I don't even know if that would even make it sound better knowing I was getting so many that they thought I was robbing them blind. I just wanted my little chikawa and pigeon with symbols. We made dinner plans <laughs> that night with a friend and we were just about to grab a taxi and head back to freshen up. But Jacob and I caught sight of a fun anime and goodies shop. Who do we think we are? <laughs> People with self-control? <laughs> we'll make it quick. We rushed in and split up for optimization. As I was looking around, I saw it. A whole section dedicated to Chikawa. It no. was like someone put a freshly baked pie on a windowsill and I was suddenly floating over to it. My eyes were zoned <laughs> in, making sure I saw every single thing possible, putting Chikawa after Chikawa in the basket. Jacob eventually came over and showed me a picture he took on his phone. In my tunnel vision, all my eyes registered was that the picture showed more Chikawa in the store. I immediately went feral. Where? Jacob's eyebrows went up in surprise and maybe a bit of fear. <laughs> and as I looked at the photo again, I realized Jacob wasn't showing me a picture of a different Chikawa section. He was showing me a picture of me at the current Chikawa section <laughs> I was standing in because he thought it was funny. And in my Chikawa <laughs> brain rot, I didn't even register I was in the picture. I just saw more Chikawa and went obsessive. <laughs> this is how I am. Either stand by me or leave. No, I don't need an intervention. Put it away. We left uh, longingly at the crane machine Chikawas. We didn't have time. Me in the K-books. <laughs> me, me in the BLK books. Time for, and we made it in time for dinner. Plus, we ended up in another arcade nearby anyway, and I got myself a Chikawa from one of those machines, so it worked out. Stop, I don't want to hear it. Finally, <laughs> we were reaching the end of our trip. We spent oh the last God. day grabbing lunch with Emily and Didus. There was a cool One Piece scavenger hunt event going on, so we also did that with them. We basically had to walk around Shibuya and find special One Piece trading card posters hidden around the area. And if we found enough That's along neat. with the special card of the day, we could get a limited edition mystery card. It was fun, but also hot and all my clothes were sticking to my body. Didus generously let me borrow his umbrella and I jumped for joy as he showed me it was coincidentally Chikawa themed. I, I don't know what's wrong with me. All I know is that bear makes me happy. We spent a few hours completing the scavenger hunt, got our special cards and bid them farewell. Always good to see you guys. Bye bye. No. I accidentally stole Didus' umbrella. <laughs> it looked so calculated. They knew how much I was obsessed with Chikawa. They've been watching my Instagram stories. Follow if you want to see brain rot in real time. Emily, I have the Chikawa umbrella. I didn't mean to steal it, I promise. It's not what it looks like. Since we were leaving in the morning and wouldn't be seeing them again, they just let me keep it. But the side eye Jacob gave me the rest of the way back. I didn't mean to stop it. Getting back to the apartment, Reality hit us hard. We needed just a few more suitcases. Oh my god. Again. In total, we ended up buying six extra suitcases to hold everything we collectively bought. And 
They ended up with five suitcases a piece and two backpacks? Is that what you're telling me? Is that what you're telling? You can mail shit. That is so expensive. Even then, it was a struggle making it fit. Jacob ended up going professional Tetris mode, perfectly fitting everything into the suitcases with quite literally no extra room to spare. We came to Japan each with a backpack, carry-on, and one extra big suitcase, and we're leaving with all together eight suitcases and four backpacks. We were lucky the taxi driver had a big enough car to fit everything because we didn't have much of a game plan if it didn't. Off to the airport we Jesus went where we Christ. checked all of our excessive bags, paid a couple fees, boarded our flight, and headed home. That trip will go down as one of the best trips I've ever gone on. It felt like Christ. it turned into a celebration of everything that makes me me. All of my hobbies and interests, Pokemon, One Piece, at the last minute, Chikoa. We got to do so many incredible things and were given so many opportunities I'd never even thought I could be a part of. I got to see so many friends that are normally so far away, ate some of the best meals of my life, and overall was just really happy, especially getting to spend it all with my best friend, Jacob. By the way, Aww. if you wanted to know why in the world we got so many things, yes, a lot of it was was for us. 90% of it all was for our friends. 100% of the Chikawa stuff was mine, but that's besides the point. If you want to mm -hmm. see what we got them, also credit where credit is due. The majority of it all was from Jacob because he's a great gift giver and even more incredible friend to the people around him. We're all nothing short of lucky to be able to call him our friend. You can go watch his Japan video. I assume it's already up because we had to animate a freaking 30 minute long video. My god, it was a lot. Thanks for sticking around but yeah i just had an unforgettable trip and i owe the opportunity to the pokemon company for inviting us to japan in the first place i'm extremely lucky to be in the position i am and will be forever grateful so i'm a selfish person and i get friends like little gifts but i know i'm gonna be buying like a bunch of big shit for myself so like y'all get crow gifts <laughs> like i'm sorry Sorry, not sorry. I'm just saying. So you can see their team. So I guess this is the people that uh, she employs down here. Yeah. So. I mean, I do more than like 100 yen gifts. Like I will specifically go out and like. So when I go to Japan, I'm very specifically there. Um. You know, for my interests, I guess, I like the anime side of Japan. Like, first of all, I also like, like, the historic side of Japan. But I, like, I'm, I'm, the we the reason I'm there is I'm a weeb. I'm, I'm going there so I can find merch and shit that I like, right? And as I am finding stuff, there will be things, and, and this is weird, because this doesn't happen in any other aspect, okay? And I blame Abby for this more than anything, I um I will see something and be like my brain will be like hey Abby likes this character or hey Ricey likes this character and it's rare cuz that doesn't happen with anybody else like it will happen with like like Ray but like it it's very rare like I never go out and start shot like looking around and be like oh my mom might like this I should get this for my mom for like a Gift later. Never happens. I am the worst family member. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why. But, like, me shopping for random shit, like, I like, first of all, I like figures. But I also like small things. I like acrylic stands. I like keychains. I like pens. I like small prints. Like, um, I like stuff like that, right? And so surprise i like shit like that right so i will go to k books and like if you don't know what a k books is it is kind of like you can sell things through a k books and there there's a bunch of them and specifically ikebukuro and so it's like kind of like secondhand sort of stuff and like you can get you know they're all specialized so a bookstore came um so they're all specialized so i like the bl one because it has 
any boys love thing. I get a lot of MXDX stuff in there. There's also like this one's for sports anime. This one's for magical girl anime. This one's for idol anime. This one's for whatever the fuck. Uh, what is it? Uh, like this one's Genshin or video games or this one's Otome games. This is, um, however, this one's basically just entirely fate. You know, this is fate. <laughs> um, so, like, I will go in there and I'm like, I want some BL stuff or like, I want some MXDX stuff or I want Deluke stuff or, you know, I'm here. Looking for Deluke stuff, I can grab some stuff for Kaya, because even though I don't like Kaya, Ricey likes Kaya, you know? Like, um, we're in the Marvel thing. Do they have anything Moon Knight related? You know, if they do, maybe I'll pick up something for, like, Ricey and Emily and maybe Tiffany. Oh, here's the MXTX things. Do they have, um, Ghost General for Tiffany? Like, do they have Dage for, you know, Abby? So it's a whole thing where I will just randomly like I'm looking for me, but also I'm I will maybe also look for my friends at the same time. So I buy little things for friends. <laughs> little crow gifts. They're easy to bring back because I know most of my stuff is going to be filled with like. I, I'm I buy like. I buy bras in Japan. It's hard to find my size now because, like, my boobs are bigger now. Um, they do have it. I I find it funny because I walked into a bra shop. Hold on. Let me. I probably should have stopped recording. But I walked into a bra shop. And, like, I would guess I was wearing, like, kind of a loose shirt or, like, something loose. And the the lady, sales lady, comes up and is like, oh, would you like me to check your size? Like, measure you? And I was like, I I know my size, but you can. And I showed her what size I was looking at. And I was like, but you, you can. And I guess she just thought that, like, I was wrong. I don't know. Because she measured me and she goes, oh, yeah, that is correct. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> uh, do I buy hentai? Mama? I buy doujin for myself. I have bought Dojin for myself. Um, specifically, so, they are all from my very old uh, fandoms, for the most part. And it's, I, I went there this past time, and I wanted Moon Knight or um, Call of Duty, right? I eventually got to the point where I was just asking the workers. I would walk into a Mandrake and be like, do you have Moon Knight or Call of Duty? And finally, they were all like, no. And finally, one of them was like, I don't have Moon Knight. Let me check in the back for Call of Duty. And I was like, first of all, check in the fucking back. Why is it in the fucking back? And she like ran back there and she brought out like three things and was like this is what I have and I was like I will take this one because I was also panicking because I didn't want to like stand there and like peruse them like I couldn't open them they were like sealed so I couldn't like open them but like I didn't want to like look right because I was like I'm this woman is standing here looking at me because I guess she has to take back the ones that I don't want and so I was like oh I'll just, I'll just take this one <laughs> and of course they were all 2009 like, the original Call of Duty Modern Warfare. So they were, like, old 09. And I was, like, I wanted new stuff, but I guess new stuff isn't out yet. Because um, I... <laughs> I mean, I went last year, and I guess, like, the newer stuff hadn't hit. If it is going to hit. Like, if they are making Dojin for 2019, uh, 2022, and 2023 Modern Warfare, they have not hit Mandrake yet. Um, I don't know if they will hit Mandrake. Uh, please, that and Moon Knight. I don't think I'm ever going to see Moon Knight, which is a shame because there's a lot of Japanese artists that post Moon Knight and Call of Duty stuff. I know because I follow them on Twitter. <laughs> please. Oh, let me stop this recording, actually.